So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Or I should say, happy post-Thanksgiving. So, this is the day after Thanksgiving. I didn't do a video yesterday because I was so busy. I had a uh, great uh, family time. We had a big dinner. And then we visited some more family who lived very close to the first family we were with. Or the first part of the family we were with. I also had a long morning because I had uh, baked some uh, cheesecakes and whatnot, and I had given it to some of my friends. Um, I, I think I did like five total. And um, basically, we had a really good day yesterday. Now, today is Black Friday, and frankly, I haven't really seen anything that I want so much that I'm willing to go out and spend money on it. But what I did do was I purchased a brand new oven. I got one of those Samsung smart ovens in order to match all the rest of the appliances that I have in my house. And in addition to that, one of my tenants uh, asked me for uh, some new appliances um, because the other appliances, well, one of them had broken and the other one was like really old. So I also did the Black Friday uh, special at Home Depot where if you buy three appliances, they do free delivery. Um, they reduce the uh, cost of installation. I think it was like $25. And uh, basically, um, all that stuff is getting delivered uh, tomorrow. So I'll definitely be posting up a video review of the new Samsung smart oven I got. Supposedly, you can run it off of an iPad or an iPhone or something like that. So you can preheat it and whatnot. And, you know, stuff like that. But um, while I was with my family... My aunts, I have aunts who are retired, and it's really crazy. See, the thing about here in New York City, if you work in New York City and you're able to survive working in New York City, you retire with a fat pension. And when I say a fat pension, I'm saying, well, and, and let's just say like this. I got one aunt who retired on $150,000 a year, and... I think it was about two months into her retirement, she's bored out of her skull, so she decides to go out and get a new job. Now, with the city pensions, they make it so that you can't make a certain amount of money. I think it's you're limited to like $30,000 a year if you want to get a second job. But she's just bored, so she wanted to get another job similar to the job she had. So what she did was she got a private job. And that private job is paying her over $110,000 a year. So basically, her pension is unaffected, and her new job that she's working is paying her over $100,000 a year. So she's damn near making like close to $300,000 a year when all is said and done. It's crazy. You know, it's like some people, like, if it was up to me, I'd retire. You'd never see my ass again. But she decided that she was going to keep working. I have another aunt who just retired uh, within the last five months. And lately, all she's been doing is going to the casino. And then my other aunt, she's another casino buff. And she's been retired for, like, the last nine years. And that's all she really does. She takes care of her house. She... You know, goes to the casino. But um, yesterday I was having a conversation with uh, my aunts about the stock market. And they heard me over talking with my cousin because I was talking to him about NVIDIA stock. Uh, because basically, if you watch that video I made where we bought those video cards, the 3090 uh, FTW3s, we got those cards for close to $2,000 each. They, they came out to 1955 and I was, actually, I was telling him, I was explaining to him the way the stock market works. Had he taken that $2,000 he spent on that video card and bought NVIDIA stock at that time, he would have made three or four times that amount of money because that was prior to the NVIDIA stock split. And if he had bought that stock instead of the card, he would have been able to sell off like a maybe a third or a fourth of his gains, and he would have been able to buy that card. The problem, however, is you'd never be able to find that card on store shelves right now because, you know, the market is still messed up. we got a lot of scalpers, and then we've got a lot of these goddamn cryptocurrency people who are buying up all the, the hardware for computers, and they're making these stupid crypto miners and they're ripping off the gamer because the gamers don't have a chance to buy the cards to just play games. These guys are buying up 10, 20 cards because they're trying to mine fucking cryptocurrency. 
Oh, we're going to talk about cryptocurrency a little bit later. So bottom line is, I was explaining to my aunt, she asked me to give her a list of the things that she should be investing in. Now, obviously, you who follow me, you already know that the first thing I'm going to say to her is that anything she puts her money in, she wants to put her money into companies that she can trust, corporations that have long periods of operation, Microsoft, Apple, so forth and so on. And basically, when people ask me for, quote unquote, a list, because the problem is nobody wants to do their own research. Nobody wants to do any of the trial and error. I've done the trial and error over the last like 20 years. The, the issue is most people, all they want is they want cheat codes in order to help them to, to start to get rich quick. Now, I try to tell people all the time, listen, there is no get rich quick. You don't get rich quick in this shit. This is like planning for your retirement. This is something that's going to take you a while. When you're talking about dividends and you're talking about getting payments from dividends, what people don't understand is if you buy a stock, it doesn't really matter how high or how low you buy it. The dividend share that you get is per share and you're getting paid simply for have purchasing the company's shares because you're investing in the company. And if that company is giving out a dividend, you are getting paid per share you hold. Now, if you're fortunate enough to get in when there's a market crash, that will allow you to buy lots of shares for less money. A perfect example is the March 2020 crash because of COVID. The March 2020 crash of COVID gave me a chance to take a lot of money, buy lots of different stocks in three different portfolios, and then just sit back and watch as the market returned. If you remember, the market for oil and gas went negative. Um, a barrel of oil was less than a dollar. And now I think a barrel of oil is like $70. It's between 70 and 75. It fluctuates every day, but I think it got as high as like $80, if I'm not mistaken. Bottom line is the banks aren't paying you much money as interest on the money that you put in the bank. They're giving you about 0.05%, if that much. Some banks may be 0 0.07, but most banks are not even giving you 1% interest. So putting money in the stock market is basically like saving money in the bank, except for the stock market waxes and wanes. It goes up and down. Now, the general trend of the Dow, for example, and the general trend of the S&P 500 has been up. If you look at it over the past 10, 20 years, it's generally been up. And it has continued, it's waxed and waned, but it has continued to go up, period. Some people will argue that's because of the price of inflation, and they very well may be right. I would also like to interject that there's more companies now than there were before. Like you have new companies on the market, you have new IPOs on the market, you have new investment opportunities. Like for instance, I've been telling you about the electric cars, Lucid, Rivian. Rivian stock grew extremely quickly as soon as Rivian came on the market. Lucid was on the market for a little while, and then after people witnessed the Lucid Air as a product, then their stock flew up. I think the Lucid Air is actually a better car than the uh, Porsche Taycan. Because for what they're charging, the take can, yeah, it may go fast, but the problem is it's like $200,000 to go that fast. The Lucid Air gives you 500 miles of range for like $100,000. So as my, in my opinion, electric cars are a great new investment opportunity, and right now the prices are relatively low. So anyway, when people ask me for a list, I usually give them a list of my dividend stocks. Now, understand something. I've been collecting dividends, and I typically post um, sometimes when I get div like large dividend, um, what is it called, direct deposits. And the reality is what you see here on the side, the X div date, each day that hits, that's when I get paid my dividends. So as you can see, I've gotten paid dividends from these companies right here already. All of these were dated 1117, 1110, so forth and so on. The companies that are about to pay me, are NVIDIA on December 1st, December 2nd, I've got Bank of America, December 3rd, that's Nike, and so forth and so on. So the more dividend stock companies that you own, the more 
dividend dates you'll be collecting your dividends so what i'm always doing is purchasing more and more stock in these companies that pay dividends and if these companies pay dividends at different times during the year you can literally be watching your money grow all year long and that's just that that's how it works so my recommendation typically like you know not so that i go on and on speaking is i tell people oil companies that pay dividends banks which pretty much almost all pay dividends and dividend paying tech companies and you know what's so sad about it i think more people are willing to listen to me now because this crypto market has been a disaster the crypto gurus have lied to these people they i'm gonna get to crypto in a second because you know i can't wait to get to crypto but the funny thing is now i think more people are starting to understand it's like listen i put my money into crypto i haven't gotten anything out of it and it was supposed to go up it never did now the people who got in like years ago who may have put like maybe ten thousand dollars or some ungodly amount of money it see the problem with crypto has always been trust nobody trusts this shit when you try to get new people in it nobody wants to be in it because they don't understand it and they don't trust it if you told somebody hey listen invest in microsoft invest in apple they'd be more likely to invest the same amount of money in microsoft or apple because they know what apple and microsoft are they know that they are reputable companies they know that they make products and they know that these guys have been around a long time so the reality is crypto the biggest problem with crypto is that every time you read about it or hear about it there's some kind of scam collapse or there's some kind of theft going on so I know there's people out there who've made a lot of money in crypto because they got in early, but guess what? There are a whole lot of people who made a lot of money with Bernie Madoff because they got in early. That doesn't mean that it was a long-term investment opportunity that made sense. So just because you make a lot of money quick does not mean that that's going to continue forever. That's just the bottom line. So I always tell people the same thing. Banks, oil, tech companies preferably all of which pay dividends i have told you all about tesla for the longest now that tesla explodes all of a sudden everybody wants to get into tesla well guess what now it costs you a thousand one hundred dollars i was telling you about tesla when the shit was less than a hundred dollars i made the video about the fucking car oh but y'all oh no 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 we're not gonna do that we're not gonna do that we're gonna invest we're gonna invest in something else well, okay, no problem, no, no problem, no problem, no, no big deal, no big deal. I'll just, I sit, I was up at 3 a.m. Like my name was Lefkowitz, counting my shekels. At 3 a.m. this morning, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning, counting my shekels. My girlfriend was like, turn that light out, because I got that iPhone, and the light is real bright and shit, it's in her face. And I was counting my shekels at 3 a.m. Because I, I just woke up, I'm counting my shekels. And all my dividends and shekels, just counting them. Meanwhile, guess what? Well, in fact, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Because, you know, I, I have to prepare myself in order to talk about the crypto. You know i got to prepare myself to talk about the crypto. All of these dividend stocks that I have been talking about, I told you to get Logitech and AMD before them things were even $50. I was telling you about it. I got the videos. I left the videos up. I was telling you about them. Logitech's 83. AMD is like, what, what's AMD? What's AMD? AMD is like $150 now. That shit is like tripled your money. It's like either 140 or 150. I can't remember. What is it? 154.21. I was telling you about it when it was less than $48. What? I could have tripled your money. Tripled it in real time. Not not some not some I have a dream about Ethereum bullshit. No, no, no. No. We get dividends over here. Apple is still doing its thing, you know. Apple, a lot of rich money goes to Apple because they already know Apple's going to be around for a long time. Apple has a user base that is not going anywhere. I mean, after all, where are they going to go? To them shitty Android phones? What are they going to do? They're going to buy a one plus one or whatever the fuck that piece of garbage is. Nobody wants that shit. Nobody wants them Google 
uh, what, what are those things called? Google something phones with the little orange button on the side. Nobody wants that bullshit. People want an Apple iPhone. They don't want no goddamn, what is that, HTC uh, something. Nobody wants that. I can't even think of the names because nobody cares. Nobody cares. Everybody want that iPhone 13 right now. I got people calling me up. Hey, hey, John, do you know how to get an iPhone 13? Do you know who's selling iPhone 13? I'm like, well, listen, you should have bought yours when I bought mine. <laughs> you know, you should have pre-ordered, you know. Uh, it's Christmas time, ladies. You know there's a shortage. Man, nobody want no goddamn, all them stupid Samsung phones. Nobody wants that shit. They got folding phones. What do you think this is, a wallet? I don't want no damn folding phone. I just want my, I want to pull it out with one hand, flick the screen, and the shit is on. That's all I want. I don't want to have to fold nothing. What you, you people are crazy. <laughs> Y'all invest in that bullshit. Anyway, so we got all these tech companies, all these electric vehicles. Rivian is 109. The 52-week high was 179. Now, I really did feel, see, okay, this is one thing I've said before. One of the things that you have to be worried about with these IPOs is a lot of times these IPOs are used in lieu of venture capitalism. The way most of these companies are supposed to build their revenue, and um, not their revenue, the way they're supposed to build their initial investment into their company is actually supposed to be by venture capitalism. But the problem is most of these companies, they try to do get-rich-quick IPOs where what they'll do is they'll build up a lot of excitement, put out an IPO, and they expect the IPO to make back the money for the initial investors. At which point, the initial investors who are holding that IPO stock, they push the sell button, and they sell out, and then it causes a crash. Because, I, I mean, Rivian was 170. I mean, Rivian's only been on the market for like a week. It was 100. It went up to $179, and now it's back to 109 You mean you lost $70 that quickly? Basically, all these initial guys, they hit the sell button. That's all. The same thing has happened numerous times. Like, if you look at, um, what was it? Uh, Wolf. And Wolf was uh, Pet, uh, what is that, Petco? Like, they got to a 52-week high of, like, $31, dropped right back to 19 Who else? Um, Robin Hood. Robin Hood was pushed to $85, dropped back to 27 uh, who else? Uh, Ga well, not GameStop. Coinbase. Coinbase skyrocketed to 429. All the motherfuckers hit the sell button at the same time. Right now, it's back to 299. So my my problem is a lot of these companies they understand that if they generate excitement, they release an IPO, they can get everybody to rush into these IPOs because you got all these dumb motherfuckers, these children, with trading accounts on Robinhood. These children. Real men don't trade on Robinhood. Now, I, I will admit, I have Robinhood. I have a Robinhood debit card. But Robinhood is a shitty trading platform. The only thing I was using it for was, um, I, was, I, was I think I was using it to make a video about how it worked, if I'm not mistaken, for somebody who asked me to show them how to use Robinhood. And then I applied for the debit card, and they gave me the debit card like right away. I haven't used it a single time because I almost have no money in Robinhood. Like, when I tell you that I have multiple trading platforms, I've got Charles Schwab, I've got uh, TD Ameritrade, i got E-Trade, i got Robinhood, i got Coinbase, because I've mined crypto, but I was mining altcoins, like Anchor. And the thing about it is, I have multiple, tra like, I, I keep my money in multiple places. This way, like, if you ever had identity theft and somebody tries to steal all your money out of one place... Yeah, you'll never get 100% of my shit, ever. You couldn't, because I, I keep my shit spread out like a spider, like a spider web. You're not getting my money. I count my shekels every night. You can call me Lefkowitz. Y'all don't get that. Y'all don't get it. But anyway, the Chinese stocks, Chinese life insurance, very good, very happy. 5.59% 5 5 dividend. Doing very good there. Doing very good. And uh, I keep telling people, oil, banks, and tech. The banks are doing great. The oil's doing great. Every time your ass pulls up into the gas station and you got to pump that $4 a gallon gas, Mr. Bi President Biden, let me tell you something. You know how people attack me? They'd be like, oh, how could you support Biden? 
He's the reason the gas prices are high. Yeah, guess what? Biden is the reason why my dividends on my oil stock are coming in so high. His shitty energy policy and America's, America, regardless who the president is, America's shitty foreign policy with countries like Venezuela and Saudi Arabia, you have to understand, America is controlling gas prices. They don't want gas prices to go low. They don't. When gas prices go low, the taxes on gas that are keeping most of these shitty states with nothing else in them afloat, the taxes can't be paid. They want, I, I want you to understand this because y'all don't understand it. So y'all, y'all believe that these people are trying to help you. These people are not trying to fucking help you. They're trying to keep the taxation going. You wonder why the Federal Reserve is keeping the interest rate so low and making it so easy to buy a mortgage? Yeah, because people pay taxes on their property. You, you wonder why they're trying to make it so that there's no foreclosures. They don't want foreclosures. They want you to keep paying them goddamn taxes. It comes down to taxes, stupid. They want to make sure those gas taxes get paid. They want to make sure your property taxes get paid. You think they can afford this welfare state without your property taxes? Of course not. They got to make sure that they keep these prices high as fuck. If America had an energy policy and a policy, a foreign policy with countries like Venezuela and Cuba that was not um, basically in bad faith. Do you remember, I bet y'all don't remember this, Hugo Chavez, when he was the president of Venezuela and he came to America and he said he couldn't stand on the uh, UN post after Bush because he smelled sulfur and he said Bush was Satan. Chavez offered to send America oil to help Americans. I bet y'all don't even remember that shit. In fact, let me type it up because somebody might call me a liar. Chavez offers oil to help. Just type it and read. Fucking learn something, you stupid motherfuckers. Learn. God damn, nobody learned shit. Chavez from Venezuela was when Americans were complaining about gas prices and gas prices were going higher and higher after Hurricane Katrina, when Americans were complaining about home, eat home heating oil prices, Chavez was offering to send America oil. That's what we were dealing with. Oh, but the oil industrial complex said, no, fuck that. We're not taking shit from him. You remember that shit? You don't remember that shit. I remember that shit. But y'all too busy watching the fucking Pistons versus LA Lakers and stupid shit that doesn't matter on fucking stupid channels that don't matter. You're not paying attention to shit. Y'all don't know anything and you don't learn anything. So the bottom line is, if we had an energy policy where we propped up Venezuela rather than Saudi Arabia, do you know how much cheaper oil would be? Oil prices would probably be about a dollar for fucking, what is it, premium unleaded. A dollar. You wonder why you can't afford your Hellcat? You wonder why you can't afford a V8 no more? You you want, yeah, well, guess what? That's all part of a plan. They're going to push you losers, everybody, into four cylinders, six cylinders with turbos on them, and eventually electric cars. Because guess what? Once they get you into electric cars, they can control the entire grid. They, they have complete control once that happens. Now, Electricity is easier to generate than oil because, you know, it's easier because you can generate it anywhere. You can generate it from solar. You can generate it from wind. You can generate it from nuclear, whatever. But the bottom line is they'll have more control because it's digitally assigned. When you plug that car in, unless you're plugging it into your house, they can actually throttle back the amount of electricity you get. Not only that, your car is going to be connected to the Internet with 5G and all that shit. So they'll have more control than they've ever had before. In fact, the, the amount of control the government's going to have, they're going to need to offer new jobs just to give people uh, jobs to help them control all that shit. So there's a lot of opportunities there if you're in the STEM profession. But, um, I, you know, I've, 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 I've got a little too far off the point. Bottom line is oil, banks, the airlines are still down because travel has not fully resumed. Those are good places to start putting your money. It's going to be a while before you see the airlines give you a dividend. 
because the airlines are not profitable right now. There's, there's not enough tourism to make them profitable. I don't think the airlines are going to be profitable in general for like the probably the next 10 years. It might not take that long, but first of all, let's get to the elephant in the room. The Dow Jones is down today. Uh, the Dow Futures, anyway, dropped more than 700 points because there's a fear of a new COVID variant that was found in South Africa. Now, I think there was a rapid sell-off, but I don't think that sell-off is going to continue very long. And simply because we've had other uh, COVID fears that have knocked down the futures market. So all I can say is what President Trump, well, former President Trump said, uh, stand back and stand by. Don't allow them to force you to sell off your dividend paying stocks. You never sell your dividend paying stocks, ever. I learned my lesson a long time ago where I owned some banks that paid dividends. And in one of my portfolios, I think it was my Charles Schwab portfolio, I sold off some stock. And sure enough, as soon as I sold that stock, it started to rise. The value of it started to rise. And I was like, oh, shit. I will never sell my bank stock ever again. So I learned a lesson. I sold off. I sold off just a little bit, not much. But I learned a lesson there. I don't. If you got a dividend paying stock, you do not fucking sell. Period. Now, if you want to try to flip these stocks that don't pay dividends, well, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. But you don't sell your dividend paying stocks. That's that's my bottom line. Now, you can do it your way if you want to do it your way. I'm just saying. I'm not selling. If my shit pays dividends, I'm not fucking selling. I will hold it for the next 10 years until I retire. And then by that time, I can decide what I want to do with my portfolio, whether or not I want to sell it off or whatever. So that's the bottom line. Because my portfolio, I've made enough money in my three portfolios where I could put down payments on two houses if I sold both of them off easily. Or I could use that money and buy off one of my other houses that I own for tenants if I really wanted to. Pay the shit right off. But I'm not going to do that because some people don't like paying their mortgages right away because they use them as tax um, benefits. Like, uh, you know, you pay your property taxes, you pay your mortgage taxes, you get a mortgage tax deduction. But I don't know. Some of y'all may not own property, so you may not know nothing about that. So, you know, I'm not even going to go there. It doesn't even matter. But, um... Let's get to the other fun stuff. Cryptocurrency. Well, what does that say right there? Uh-oh, Bitcoin. Uh-oh, what does that say? Bitcoin is down after all that shit talking. Oh, yeah, we're going to the moon. Bitcoin's going to be $100,000 by summer. Bitcoin's going to be a million dollars by 2022. Bitcoin's going to be a hundred thousand dollars by Christmas 2021. The entire time I said, no, it's not. The entire time. I never wavered. Never wavered. Now, granted, I did get some surprises along the way. The first time Bitcoin hit, like, what was it, 60000 so There was a couple of institutions that poured a lot of money into Bitcoin. Since then, El Salvador has been thrown on the crap table, and they are now uh, considering themselves a Bitcoin country because their national currency failed, partially because of American politics and American uh, foreign policy. But uh, who knows, maybe Venezuela will be next, since America's trying to fuck them over in order to make sure we keep paying the Saudis, in order to make sure that we keep these oil prices high. Maybe Venezuela will be next. I won't be a bit, mark my words, one of them Latin American countries that's fucked up right now, it might even be Guatemala, I don't know, mark my words, and you could say you heard it here first. Because of America's foreign policies, one of those other countries that's near El Salvador may end up being next to try to throw themselves on the crap table and become the next Bitcoin or Ethereum country. Who knows? I don't give a fuck. In my country, in America, I pay for everything in dollars. Um, my girl Michelle Markey was talking about whether or not you should uh, get paid in options from your uh, corporation or your company. 
Let me tell you something. I don't want nothing else but greenbacks. That's the only thing I try. I, I was born into the U.S. dollar. I'm going to retire into the U.S. dollar. And I'm going to die in the U.S. dollar. I paid for my, um, what was it called? My uh, funeral plot. My, uh, we, we have a, a, what is it called? A cemetery. And they offer you a prepayment for your uh, graves and shit. Oh, I paid for mine. My shit is prepaid. Prepaid. So a lot of you broke motherfuckers are going to end up getting cremated because you can't afford the nice shiny coffin. Not me. I'm going to be like the Irishman, and I'm going to drive in there in my wheelchair, and I'm going to say, nah, give me the green one. Y'all going to get cremated. I'm not doing that shit. It's like if there is an afterlife or something and people turn into zombies, oh, believe me, I'm coming back. I'm going I'm to come back as a, a fucking zombie, and I'm going to be buried with my gun, so I'm going to come out of the coffin shoot. So yeah, you. I'm not getting cremated. Not like the rest of you losers. Uh, uh-uh. cause y'all, all, all of you Bitcoin hodlers ain't gonna be able to afford your crypto. You're not gonna be able to afford your crypto funeral. So anyway, oh yeah, we're gonna be a hundred thousand dollars by summer. So excuse me, crypto uh, gurus, uh, crypto uh, faithful, crypto hodlers. Could somebody please tell me, uh, when did we hit a hundred thousand in uh, Bitcoin? Could somebody tell me that? Because uh, as far as I know, uh, it didn't uh, happen. Because, you know, as far as I know. Do you know how many other people I know who I've tried to argue with? I was like, yo, listen. Ripple ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Ripple. Now, now, keep in mind. Ripple used to be, well, it was like point zero 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 two something back like in 2018. Yeah, Ripple has gone up to a dollar ninety or three dollars or something, but it quickly collapsed from the three dollar mark and it never ever got back there. People who are still putting their money in Ripple, I don't understand why they're doing it. Especially this there's, there's over fourteen thousand cryptocurrencies now, and Ripple has been targeted by the US government. Why are you going after an asset that the government is basically telling you it's illegal to even buy the shit? In fact, I think in my state, it's illegal for us to buy certain types of cryptocurrencies. Do you think I'm going to risk going to the booty house to buy this bullshit, to buy into this Ponzi scheme shit? No, no. Shiba Inu. I remember these fake-ass crypto gurus. Oh, yeah, Shiba Inu is going Super Saiyan. It's going Super Saiyan, everybody. The power level is over 9,000. How's Shiba Inu doing right now? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shiba Inu, um, let's see. Um, uh, not, uh, uh, not, uh, not that well, sir. Uh, no, it's not doing that well, sir. Oh, shit. What is this? Point zero 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 three eight five five. Hmm, nah. That don't look like no Super Saiyan to me. That's not what it looks like to me. I don't know what you saw. Dodgecoin. How about Dodgecoin? Oh, yeah, everybody, we're going to get Dodgecoin. We're going to Pluto. We're going to the moon. We're going to Saturn and Venus and Jupiter. And we're going to do it with warp drive on the Starship Enterprise. Dodgecoin's 20 cents right now. Now, they couldn't even pump it. They, with all of the media manipulation. They couldn't even get this shit to a dollar. The people who don't understand math don't understand. They, they're like, oh man, if Shiba Inu just goes to a penny, I'm going to be rich. Hey guys, in order for Shiba Inu to go to a penny, that shit would have to be worth $10 trillion. Let me explain it to you like this. America isn't even worth $10 trillion. The country of America is not worth $10 trillion. We're almost $29 trillion in debt, so we're already negative. This country is not worth $10 trillion. And you think, you think, now, now get this, I just want you to understand what I'm saying here. So I'll say it calmly. You think that some Ponzi scheme crypto with a fucking picture of a Japanese dog is going to be worth $10 trillion. When the country that you're in isn't worth $10 trillion, you think that's going to happen? No. No. Well, 
I mean, how about these guys who invested in Safe Moon and Safe Mars? By the way, Safe Moon was built because they claimed that they were going to finance safe trips to the moon. Safe Mars was built claiming that they were going to finance safe trips to Mars. I don't know if you guys know this, but NASA is never going to let any of you motherfuckers ever <laughs> go go to the moon or Mars. Ma- where do they get this? I don't understand where they get this stuff. I don't understand where they get it. Like, you, I mean, a Ponzi scheme, you know, you're supposed to try to sell me a, 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 a reasonable dream. But you're telling me that we're financing safe trips to a planet that's millions, of, nine months away? Really? I don't get it. I just, I, you know, I, I don't get it. And then Cardano, man, oh man, all the people I know. Oh yeah, Cardano's about to hit two dollars. It's gonna be a hundred dollars soon. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Nope, nope, nope. What was it? it was, it's got it got to like a high, I think, of like two dollars. I think it hit maybe yeah, three dollars and ten cents. By the time it hit three ten, everybody thought that they were filthy rich. Well, it's back down to dollar <clears> fifty six. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, all of this time, I've kept up the same message. What you got to do is buy things you can trust so that you don't have to worry about the IRS hovering over you, trying to put you in the booty house, buy those banks, buy that oil, buy those dividend-paying tech companies, and buy those... What is it? Dividend paying regular stocks. I used to talk about marijuana, but the problem is everything I said has come true about marijuana. Marijuana is basically legal now. I mean, you can, it's so bad, you can literally walk across the street from a New York City public school and the stores sell weed. The, the students that you smell on the trains that got their book bags on, you know their students, that are walking around, these kids smell like weed. In the morning, these kids don't even eat their frosted flakes. They get weed flakes. They get weedy, weedies, weedies. That's how bad it's gotten. Everything I said came true. Uh, what was it? Kamala Harris and Biden. Once they got in the office, marijuana was made basically legal. New York City, uh, Connecticut, California, uh, New Jersey, me- recreational weed is legal to buy. They got fucking vape pens that you plug into a USB port now. I seen some shit. I couldn't even understand what I was seeing. I was like, what the fuck is this? You're selling USB sticks that plug into a computer so I can hook a crack pipe to it? And I can smoke crack from a USB port? Like, what, what, what is this shit? Uh, wait a minute. USB, what is this? USB weed? I'm just going to call it a pen because I don't even know what the... Look at this shit the fuck is this? You're selling digital crack pipes to children. Look at this shit. They said right across, go across the street from a New York City public school. And I swear to you, you can find all of this shit being sold right across the street from our public schools. They got digital crack pipes. What the fuck? When I was a kid in the eighties, it was all about Reagan uh, just say no to drugs. You fast forward to now, I'm 40 years old, they got digital crack pipes. I saw it coming the whole time. I kept saying, I, I kept telling people about these weed stocks, I kept telling them, and crazy thing happened, the shit turned out real. I don't know how that happened. Now they're selling motherfucking digital crack pipes. What the fuck? I don't, I don't even know what to say. They got digital crack pipes. So I, I give up. I give up. I've given up on this society. All I got to do is survive for the next 10 years without getting gunned down like Ahmaud Arbery or Young Dolph or by Kyle Rittenhouse. All I got to do is survive for the next 10 years, keep this Desert Eagle loaded, 
And if I can survive 10 more years and retire, I can get the fuck out of this crazy ass country while y'all are selling digital crack pipes to your children. I can make it out of this country and I can go retire on some nice beach with some foreign girl who's selling me buco juice. And I'm going to go to either Philippines or I'm going to go right to Thailand and I'm going to have me a nice young wife who's going to be making me the buco juice. Celebrating with the buco juice. While well, Meanwhile, y'all are going to be here and you're going to be in this country with your children and they're going to be drugged out because you, you've got digital crack pipes being sold to them at their school across the street. So you're, gonna, you're not even going to find me. The only time I might come back here is to check on my houses. And I'm just going to keep extracting my, my pension and my money. I'm going to be out of this country. I'm going to be right there in Manila or Bangkok. And I'm going to have some nice young wife selling me the buco juice and, and feeding me uh, what is it, uh, coconut juice and, and whatnot. I'm going to be fed the buco juice. You're going to be stuck here in America with your children who are going to school smoking digital crack pipes, but I'm going to be in a nice, safe, healthy country with a nice young wife giving me the buco juice. Now, you tell me how does that sound as far as a retirement plan.